Up the front we have a tap that runs from your 50 litre water tank on the front there. That's designed to feed your ensuite so that you've got uh, water to your ensuite. And it also comes with that shower hose and a shower rose so you can have a nice shower in there. The idea of this is it runs in through the gas hot water system that's supplied. So you have gas in and cold water in and of course you get hot water coming out of that hot water system into your shower. Okay, up the front here we have two jerry can holders and two gas bottle holders. Um, very self-explanatory if you like, your jerry cans drop in there. There's a couple of tie down loops there if you want to use them to tie them in. And same with your nine kilo gas bottle holders, they just unclip, your gas bottle goes in, comes back around and just clips tight. We've got a dual hose regulator up here with a changeover valve. What that means is, if you've got two hoses, two bottles, sorry, in and plugged in there, you can put this little valve in the direction of the bottle you wanna draw from, so you only ever drain one bottle at a time. Now the system does work. If that valve is in the neutral position, it will still draw from one bottle, but if you don't have a second bottle connected, it'll draw from that bottle and pump it out that one. So always remember to have that valve over to one side from the bottle you want to draw from. Around the front in your fridge area, just hit those couple of buttons, it'll open up all your catches. You've got a little ventilation fan here. Now there's a switch just down on this right hand side that turns that on just there and also a 12 volt accessory outlet also. That'll turn that on to feed some nice fresh air into your fridge space. Um, all of your catches are adjustable on all your doors and they're also key to lock if you want to lock them all. You've got a dual pinch weld seal that can be adjusted so when you pull that in it pulls down nice and tight. If you want to pull that in a bit tighter you just adjust that little screw on there and it'll pull that seal in nice and tight so no water or dust gets in. Drawers in here very very easy to use they just slide out you hit this little blue button to push it back in. You've got a handy pole diagram there. Now all your poles inside the camper have got numbers on them, they're all numbered. Uh, what we've done here is we've just developed this sticker and colour coded it to show you what is on the outside, what is on the inside and of course what's around your windows. So the numbers on the sticker represent what's on your poles. You won't find any colour coding on your poles. On the face here we have a double USB port and also a 12 volt accessory outlet. Um, that'll need to be turned on at the control box around the other side. I'll go through that with you in a minute. All right, guys, now I'm going to open the kitchen for you and show you how that works. A couple of latches to open up. A couple of latches. Kitchen slides out nice and easily. There's a roller lock on the end, so just give it a little bit of a lift and a pull, and that locks that into position. If you're on a bit of a hill, it'll save it from just sliding in by itself. There's legs on the underside of here, which drop down. Little press of a button, drops them down into position. I usually set them up on a bit of an angle, so I don't have to hold the kitchen up while I adjust the height. And then you can just come around, lift that kitchen a little, and it'll bring it out to level, okay? There's another extension bench just here, which also has a leg, like so. There's a little section there, just fits up under that stainless lip. Like that, okay. Extra workbench on the back, preparation. Opens up your stove. Your utility rack here, very, very easy to operate. Just opens up, the bottom shelf slides, slides down. A little locking pin here comes out of there, tilts forward and goes into a front one. And that's all you need to do with that. You've got a light here which is flexible, has a switch on it there to turn it on and off. Taps very self-explanatory, it is on and off. You have a press button plug on and off there. A couple of connections you need to make. You have a water hose here that you'll find in that center drawer. It just pops in to those water fittings just like so. That'll give you your uh, water draw from 120 litres into your living area here. You also have a couple of little black plugs just here that look like that. They just plug into those little sockets and what they'll do, they'll power up your light and your igniter for your stove. In this third drawer down here, third opening, 
You've got your drainage hose. It just pops through the bottom section of your kitchen into a bucket to drainage there, okay? And when you're packing up, there's a couple of things to watch and keep an eye on. Make sure you get done when you're packing up. Firstly, you want to make sure that drainage hose is up out of your bucket and tucked away back into your kitchen. Of course, you put away all the bigger things. Your light and your kitchen shelf comes down. Stove closes up. Preparation benches can come over. Extra bench goes in. And then you just really want to fold up those legs down the bottoms. Like so. A couple of things you want to just check to be, before you push your kitchen in. Make sure these two latches here are on the inside and the up position. Also, make sure your drawers are closed properly. Okay? You can then proceed to push that in. Now, if your latches are open, like so, they're going to put a nice little dent on the side of the camper there. So just make sure they're in that position there. Kitchen will sit in nicely. You can close up. While I've got you on this corner, we'll talk about your stabilizer legs. You've got one on each corner. Very easy to operate. Pull your little blue handle. It'll lock down to a couple of different positions. One being vertical, of course. Grab your tool out of there. Give that a spin and it'll wind up and down to suit the level point that you want to be at. Like so, okay? Very, very easy to use. Around the back here, we have your spare wheel carrier and an extra toolbox here. To get your spare wheel off, you need to lower this section down so that you can access that. There's a small pin here and one on the other side that comes out and then this section will just tilt down so you can get that spare wheel off. We have a 240 volt inlet. So you need that 15 amp lead to plug into that. It is a 15 amp plug. Um, what that gives you is the, the ability to plug in when you're at a powered site to keep everything charged. And also when you're at home, it's a multi-stage charger, so it'll keep everything maintained. So when you are gonna go away again, it's ready to go. Uh, a little bit of storage area in there. You do have access to your rear water pump just there, okay? If you need to access it for anything at all. Your second water pump, your front one, is in a sealed box up under this compartment here. You've got two water fillers, one for your rear tank, one for your front tank, and then your electrical control panel. In your electrical control panel, you have two water level gauges, one for each tank. You've got a 50 amp inline fuse holder. In the vertical position, it's in the on position. Hit that button, it turns it off. There's not really ever a reason to turn it off. If it is off, you're gonna stop your charge going from the front of your camper in through to your batteries. It'll just stop there. So keep that on at all times. The little meter gauge here in the red is what volts your batteries are currently at. Currently we're reading 12.4 volts. And in the blue, we're drawing about four and a half, 4.9 volt uh, amp hours at the moment. We've got the fridge turned on, it's cycling at the stage. You'll see we've got a little gauge here which represents that sticker. Um, it just generally tells you what your batteries are at and how you need to keep them charged to avoid any damage happening to those. Across the bottom, a bunch of switches that are all labelled down the bottom, the red one being your main power, lights, fridge, plugs, pump one and pump two. Your two pumps are obviously for your water tanks. Plugs are for all those little plugs that plug in all over the place, like at your kitchen, your WSB, your 12 volt accessory outlets to liven those up. Your fridge is through your Anderson over on the fridge compartment there, and the light switch is for all your extra lights in your storage areas. Okay. These little bubbly top ones up here are reset switches for each terminal. If you find you're having trouble not getting power to a section, you just come around, press that button, and it'll reset that terminal for you. In here, large storage drawer in there. Comes with your sand peg kit, that's where that's normally stored. All your latches and everything on this camper are 
uh, adjustable. If you want to pull them in a little bit tighter, you just adjust this little bolt and that'll pull that in and compress that a bit tighter. You have a double pinch weld seal on all your doors and also all your catches can be locked and they're all keyed alike, so you just need the one key for that. In this one here, we have the other vent which feeds from the fridge area to allow full ventilation to pass through and your fire extinguisher just in there also. Around the front, two nine kilo gas bottle holders. We also give you the rings for the 4.5 kilo gas bottles. That way, if you want to save a little bit of weight, you can just put the smaller bottles in there and change them over. Two jerry can holders. Down the front, we have the McHitch UniGlide three and a half ton coupling. We supply all the components for that to uh, fit up to your vehicle and we fit that up for you when you pick your camper up. Your 750 kilo XO series off-road jockey wheel, dual wheel, robust, can't break them, that's why we use them. The winch on the front here is for opening your camper, just like there's one on the back for closing your camper. We'll show you that a little bit later. All right, so we're gonna show you how the camper opens now, and starting with the boat rack. In the boat rack, you've got these two pins just here. Take those out first. Shoot around the other side, undo your center, over center latches, which are the same as that, and then that'll come over. Those pins can just go back in that same position if you want to put it vertical. Otherwise, you can pull it all the way over and have it horizontal and put those pins in that, in that position. All right, guys, now we're going to open the lid. Now, there's two different ways to do this. First, we're going to do it manually by just pushing the lid over with those struts on there that assist that opening. The second time I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it with the winches and show you how it's done that way, okay? So we've got one latch on the back, which needs to be opened up. Same as these ones here. Three down either side. As you can see, that will just pop up. And then you can get behind it and give it a push. Just make sure you stand at the front here and just catch that as it comes down. And then just hook that front winch on to secure that there. Okay guys, so the other way to open your camper using the winches, I'll go through that with you now. Firstly, you're gonna release all these catches and allow the camper just to pop up a little bit to give you a bit of leverage. It's a good idea even just to give it a little bit of a push so that it sits up a little bit. I'll grab that front winch. Now I've already unwound this winch. This winch is a self-locking winch, not like a boat winch where it just free spools. You need to actually unwind it all the way around the back here and put it on this little latch here. Okay. Once we've done that, we're going to put the back winch on as well to stop the lid from falling over too far. Like so. Okay. Around the front, we'll winch this one over. Once I get to about there, I'm just going to check that back winch. You can see here I've got that adjusted so that when I open that front winch, it's going to catch with that rear one and not come down in a big hurry. There we go there. We're past that vertical point. I'll wind that down. So it comes and rests down there. Once you've done that, and there you are. That's the second way to do it. And one of our features with the Savannah X is that extra bedding at the back, so I'm going to show you how that goes together. Around the back here, we have a couple of pins, one on either side, which just pop out just here. 
which allow that rear section to slide down, fold down. I usually just pop that pin just in there like that. We'll undo these clips on this back. These are your little support stays that go up and sit underneath the draw system to slide out in order for it to support its weight. Sit there like that. Grab out your keys. Undo those couple of locks. You'll find that it'll slide out nice and easily. Just like that. Once you've done that, you just jump underneath. Put those stays in the right spot. There's two of those to go in. They just go in like so, okay? There's the other one there. It would just sit up in the same spot. So a couple of important things to remember for your Savannah X when you're setting your tent and everything up. Let's go through that now. You've got your rear pole here is on that strut at the back. It will just stand up, up over your tent. And you then got a couple of these flaps just here, which need to be zipped up. all the way down around a little corner down to the base just there the next thing you want to do is just bring this over the top put these press studs on what that does is secures the base of the tent so when you get inside and raise those bow poles you're not going to raise them too far now really important when you're packing up that you absolutely unzip that zipper there. If you leave it zipped up and try and push your, that drawer and section back in, there's a good chance you might tear your canvas. So really important to unzip that just as you found it when you opened it up, okay? We've got some keys here to open the main door. You'll notice here there is two full sets of keys. Please separate them, you don't want to lose them. Keep one in your camper, one in your car or something like that. There's enough, the two big keys here are to open your main door. Very easy, drops down, got adjustable legs on your steps if you're in a hole just here, and that just tilts down like so. You've also got your water filler keys and your small keys, the lateral you catches around your camper also. So when you open your camper up, you've got your stairs down, you can get inside and start lifting those bow poles and putting your spreaders in. So it's just a matter of hitting those clasps, pulling that up and closing them off again. You've got one on both sides. Do it in a couple of stages. You've got the same thing at the front, one either side, and then this bow pole just pushes toward the front. Like so. Um, you'll notice if we've got you know, this extra section at the back for this extra bed. Now a couple of important things to know up here. We've already raised that pole up the back. You will notice when you first open your camper that the Velcro tabs, the same as these ones here, are not attached on that back pole. Um, so we need to get in there and just wrap those around the pole and attach those. Again, very important that you disconnect those before you close your camper. Otherwise it will pull the canvas tight and potentially cause some damage. Wrap those around. That's all you need to do. Once we've done that, we raise this rear bow pole up. <clears throat> Bring it up to height. And we're done. So you'll see we've got these dog leg spreader bars. They just attach, they're, they're for the side of the annex. Wait a second, that should be easier. Pop in there.
straight up the top. Give them a push open. Puts those in. And your straight ones for this side over here, they pop in the end. Up the top. Give them a little bit of a push and lock them off. It's that easy. I've got a couple more to do in the front. We've also got these two little vertical poles that just make the stands on the ends there as well. Bit of adjustment. And you're pretty much done, ready for a sleep. Now a couple of things you really want to have a good look at while you're in here, just to make sure your tent is sitting correctly. As you put your bow poles up, you'll notice that there is a seam of canvas on either side of it. You really want that bow pole to sit in the dead center of that section there. The other thing is you want to check is that any windows you can look at, they tell you a thousand things. You can see that there is quite floppy and nice. If I was to overextend that in any area, that'll give me some lines on that window. Let me show you. If I raise that up like that, you can see there's these lines created diagonally like this, which is basically telling me I'm too tight up there. So back that off. Only needs to be 10 mil or so. That goes all floppy again. A 10 mil adjustment, like in this area here, will make a difference of 40, 50 mil by the time it gets out to the other side of your annex. So really important to make sure that your tent is set up correctly before you start your annex. All right, so now with your windows, you'll notice that our windows are all rolled down. What that allows you to do is have them open just a little bit. If you still want that privacy, a bit of ventilation through the top. Alternatively, you can zip them all the way down and just roll them up. Couple little ties just here, toggles to close them off. You really want to make sure when you're packing your camper up, you roll those windows back up again and maybe just leave a little bit of space in between your zippers just to let that air get out. Okay, guys, we're going to put one of your window awnings up. Very simple to do. Let me show you how that goes. You've got a zip on either side, like so. Two little poles, hook on one end, spig it on the other. It goes through this main hole, and underneath there you've got a little canvas pocket. Looks like that. So that bar just fits in there to protect your paintwork when your pole is in position. Once we've done that, this comes around the top, goes into there. Canvas on top. You can hang on to that while I'm doing that. Goes on to there. Canvas on top. And then we just extend that out. And of course, these are adjustable as well. That's your window done.